Gasparini and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined again by Brian Nider, who is the CEO of GatePath. Brian, welcome. Thank you for having me um, back. I was fortunate enough to interview you as the new CEO yes. of GatePath uh, about a year ago. Yep. So um, how'd it go? You're it's still been, there. Still here and having a great time. <laughs> Uh, it's been a fantastic year. We had a lot of great milestones in the past year, uh, continuing to grow and expand our programs, uh, donor and community engagement, staff retention, sort of all the things that are so important for the quality of what right. we do in the community have all gone in incredibly well. So any surprises? I think the biggest surprise is really more at, at what nonprofits do not only in San Mateo County, but around the country. Right. So much of uh, health and human services are provided by nonprofits. They are a key fabric to any community, and a vibrant nonprofit community is critical for so many services that are needed for uh, people here in San Mateo County. I bet, too, because um, were, were you originally from San Mateo County? Yes. Okay, yep. so you, you've learned, you, you know about the landscape here yep. in San Mateo County. We live in one of the wealthiest communities overall when you look at San Mateo County, San Francisco, Silicon Valley. Um, some of the cre greatest wealth creation from a company's yes. t tech standpoint, biotechnology. And yet one of the things that we read about is philanthropy doesn't necessarily stay here. Right. That it's now, it's global and it's yes. um, out in other parts of the country. And I think a lot of folks don't understand that um, as our community need grows, so lots of nonprofits have to do even more and need is greater, yes. the dollars aren't necessarily staying here right. as well. So I, I imagine that was probably one of the challenges that was in your first year. You're seeing your programs grow, which is great because you're, you're reaching right. more children, more, um, more families, and yet it's harder and harder to raise the dollars even yes. though they're here. Yeah, donor outreach is critical. Cost of living in the Bay Area right. is, a, is a challenge Retention for of staff. staff. Retention. So uh, about a, a little over a year ago, we made a concerted effort to uh, increase the starting uh, hourly rate for our staff, uh, expanding some of our benefits programs and, and things like that. Uh, reimbursement rates from insurance companies and from the state don't go up, so that means it has to fall on donors to help us close that gap. Right. Uh, you know, it's an interesting mixed bag because so much of the philanthropy in the Bay Area goes out of the Bay Area. I, I will say, though, when I've been able to have an opportunity to share what we're doing right. in the community, uh, people have been incredibly supportive, uh, not only of treasure, but also time right. and maybe opening doors and making introductions. So let's do that for, um, for a minute. Let's step back and just remind sure. our community about GatePath and what it is that you do do. Perfect. So we are a 90, we just had our 97th anniversary. Happy we, birthday. Thank you. Uh, we serve children and adults with developmental disabilities. Everything from early intervention and therapy to an inclusive preschool to adult programs that are site-based, community-based, employment. Uh, so a wide suite of services for young and old uh, in the developmental disabilities community, as well as we have a family resource center. So we have services for families that may have kids on the autism spectrum or that have a special need that we're a, a hub for San Mateo County to provide access for them to the services that they need. And you know what's what's great about um, this community is we're now beginning to really understand like you had talked about the spectrum yes. of developmental disabilities and it's so wide and vast today. So the good news is we're diagnosing, we're understanding, yes. we're um, observing and and seeing where some of these special needs are because it can be e anywhere from severely disabled where there's constant need for supervision mm -hmm. and for coaching and mentoring mm -hmm. and teaching yep. to where somebody's living an independent life and is an adult and just sort of needing right. some of the life skills right um, and then now of course we um, everyone has autism and some um, and um, Asperger's on their minds and in their conversation. So right. how do you keep up with all of the spectrum? Because they're obviously very different right. need as far as right. programs and services. Well, I think uh, with the services we provide, obviously everything has to be tailored to the individual. Mm -hmm. Individual needs vary just like anyone's needs vary. Right. And so with uh, the skilled therapists for dealing with therapy, they get to know each individual and have a special tailored program that's going to help them reach their potential. Uh, same thing with adult employment. Uh, we have job coaches that are very tuned into helping develop the skills 
that uh, that some of our adult participants need to have gainful employment, and uh, and so we're really looking at ways to refine and tailor programs, teaching, education, whatever it might be, to help any individual reach their full potential. Yeah, and and it's it's an amazing um, balance that you've created because. Um, the numbers are, are great, and you're growing um, all of the time with regard to your participants and, yep. and the number of families that are yep. coming to you and seeking um, support and services. And yet, uh, you are able to provide um, these tailored and unique circumstances because, as you said, one child who's been diagnosed may be very different than the child next to them yep. um, with the same diagnosis right. because of their spectrum. So I applaud the organization for all that you do. It's made up of, of fantastic staff. I mean, we have incredible therapists, teachers, and uh, staff members that are really always looking for ways to keep improving the quality of our programs right. that find that unique opportunity that allows one of the folks that we get to serve reach their full potential. That's right. what it's always about. How do we keep finding the talent that may be hidden bring that out, develop those skills, and you can't do it without, uh, you know, great staff. And we're very blessed to have an incredible And a very generous community, too. Yes. Many of your supporters and donors don't have children or family members that um, participate in your program and yet know that you're <clears throat> such an important part of the fabric of San Mateo yeah. County to say, we've got to support these programs. The other part of what you do is you do have some um, uh, insurance uh, services or yep. the families do yes. through Medicaid um, and so that got a little bit dicey for a while yes. as the federal government was trying to play with some of the things that Medicaid would or would not cover. Right. Certainly the area of um, families with children and adults with disabilities would have been affected. They would have. It's uh, it, it was you know certainly very dicey in terms of what could have happened. The way California has expanded Medicare Medicaid programs of which uh, it, they serve a lot of different needs. Developmental disabilities community is part of that. Mm -hmm. If the Congress had gone to a block grant, it would have reduced overall funding to the state of California. Uh, that gap would have been so significant, I don't know how the state would have closed it, which means that many services, included, including ours, uh, that have been fairly, you know, I'd say underfunded for a while, would have been significantly impacted. So uh, we're happy to see where that ended up. Uh, and we were thinking about what would be the plan B if funding ended up being cut for our programs. It would have been devastating for us and well, for I those families. I think it's important to talk about because when we, you know, I, I was um, heavily listening and learning about right. what cuts may or may not have been made to Medicare and Medicaid with this last iteration. Um, <clears throat> but I never really heard anybody talking about the disabilities world and what th this new program would have cut or impacted. So I think it's really important that people here know that when we're talking about Medicare and Medicaid, that we're often talking as well as these. this Absolutely. is a fund that supports yes. um, adults and children with disabilities. That is correct. It, it, it could have been devastating, and, and a large part of the, the California program is dependent upon federal matching funds. Mm -hmm. And if those had gone away, it would have been devastating to us and many other communities. Right. So we just have a minute left. Sure. I think um, we talked a little bit in the beginning about the spectrum yes. of um, persons with disabilities. What are some of the misconceptions that I might think of if I don't have um, someone in my family that, that's been diagnosed or, or has or is within the spectrum? We had a, a Genentech volunteer group out at our adult site uh, probably about six months ago. And one of the projects was to put together dream boards for the participants, where they were cutting out pictures out of magazines and putting the things that they had dreams about doing. And I just happened to walk up, and they're all sitting on, one, on this table. I was looking at them. And what really struck me is the human experience is the same no matter who you are. We all have the same dreams and aspirations. Right. And I think that there is a responsibility we have as a community to help people achieve those dreams because uh, they're just as rich and vibrant as anyone. And uh, I learn more every day than I can ever give back, and it's just such a blessing to be able to do this work. Yeah, and, and I would encourage anyone who's watching this program or sees it in any way, shape, or form to contact um, uh, Gate Path because there are so many volunteer opportunities. There are. Just to yep. even come and sit in one of the programs or, or Absolutely, observe Danny. a class or That's right. story time, anything. Um, yep. 
it's it's a great thing to enrich your life and to learn. And it is. So, yep. um, so it seems like it's an annual thing for you and I to have a conversation. It is. So see you this time next year. This time next year. And tell All us right. a little bit about what's coming up with um, Gate Path. So a uh, couple of big things we have coming up. We have a our big golf event fundraiser coming up in September at Stanford yeah. Golf Course. Check that out on our website. Okay. We have a speaker series in the fall. We're lining up uh, what we think are some pretty interesting folks. Uh, one is a, an author on a book about uh, autism called Neurotribes, which has uh, received a lot of recognition. Uh, and then in the spring, we're going to have our next Power of Possibilities event. Last year was a huge success. We're hoping to top the one that we just had with Colin Farrell uh, with another fantastic event next March. Well, thanks so much, yep. Brian, for and all of this is available on your website. Yep. And so we'll see you next year. See you next year. All right. Same thanks place, all, same time. Thanks to all of you, and we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.